Chaos going on at the nation's airports ahead of the big July 4th weekend, which could break records. Joining us now, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Thanks so much for giving us some time. We imagine you're a busy guy uh, these days. <laughs> Certainly encouraging that folks are traveling again, spending money, that the worst of COVID, at least for now, is, is behind us. That people want to travel and get out there and, and, and enjoy the 4th. Uh, but the headlines have been rough in terms of airport uh, capacity, cancellations, delays, staff shortages. What is the state of play this morning and your best advice to travelers? So my best advice for travelers is to take advantage of the passenger protections that we at the Department of Transportation have been securing for you, especially over the course of the last year. Good idea to visit flightrights.gov to learn more about what you can expect as a passenger and how our department has your back. Now, we have seen a lot of severe weather over the last few days, especially in the early part of the week. Uh, that created a number of cancellations, especially on Monday and Tuesday. Things seem to be improving. Yesterday, the uh, system overall, with the exception of United Airlines, was at about 2% cancellations, which is a rate we would consider pretty normal. United working through a lot of problems, but they seem to be headed in the right direction too. So uh, today looks to be like a more normal travel day, which it's good news because we got a lot of people uh, headed uh, on trips today, but still watching out for some weather around the country. Also, the wildfire smoke could play a role affecting uh, the visibility at some airports, which could lead to delays. And we have a situation beginning tomorrow where a lot of uh, cell phone companies are going to activate a higher power level of antenna. There are still some planes out there that are not qualified to fly under certain conditions because of uh, concerns about interference. Those planes haven't yet been upgraded. Uh, we are watching closely to see any impacts that could have on delays. Although again, overall, the system is certainly performing much better than it did one year ago. So you mentioned United, and I want to ask you about that because um, there are some internal issues here. According to preliminary cancellation data from the Department of Transportation, uh, United Airlines has had the highest percentage of cancellation. So what internal issues are they having? Um, is it staffing shortages? Is it what you were mentioning, the 5G rollout? Um, or is it something else? Well, I, I can't speak for them. I know they've uh, had some concerns getting their crews in position after they got thrown by uh, weather issues and, and other issues uh, over the course of uh, last weekend. Uh, they uh, pointed to some staffing concerns with ATC as well, although we haven't had a staffing uh, trigger in the uh, New York airspace, which is the one they're worried about uh, since Sunday. Uh, but also just uh, when you look at the geography of this, the way the storms hit, United's hubs were, were hit especially hard by that. One of the challenges that uh, we saw across the national airspace early this week is that you had these pop-up thunderstorms sometimes simultaneously hitting multiple hubs. That did throw the system out of whack. But again, uh, we've seen things really improve over the course of the week, even when you factor in the issues United was having. Yesterday, the cancellation rate settled in at about 4%. If we can see that continue to go down today, we'll be in normal territory. You mentioned staffing issues. A shortage of air traffic controllers is said to be contributing to this problem. Um, you mentioned that you're hiring thousands. So how long does it take to get them trained and ready to go? And what's that the root cause of all these staffing issues? So it takes a long time for an air traffic controller to be certified and qualified to work in a particular airspace. Remember, you not only have to learn in general how to be an air traffic controller, uh, but it can take sometimes a year or more of training to learn all of the specifics of the airspace that you're going to be assigned to. Now, that's for a very good reason. Uh, you know, to, for air travel to continue to be the safest mode of travel in the United States, which is a remarkable achievement, we have to maintain those very high standards. But when you add that to the effects of COVID on training and what we were able to do, you know, even an impact that happened to the uh, training facilities a couple of years ago is something that we're still working through. Now, we're working with Congress right now to get more resources so that we can hire more air traffic controllers and get better technology. I want to be clear, this issue is not the, the main cause of delays and cancellations. It's not even the number two cause of delays and cancellations, but it can be a factor, which is why it's so important for us to continue working with Congress to get those resources resources and to continue picking up the pace on hiring those personnel. Mm.